Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I want to play around with a synthesizer I recently found out about. It's called OBXD. I know a little bit about it. I tried using it just a little bit, and I just want to jump in, dive in, try to learn it as much as I can, and make a simple track with it. By the end of this video, we'll have something that sounds like this. Yep. Okay, so uh, here is my Ardor session. I have Botline open, so we can have um, Spectral View, and I'm going to select OBXD from the drop down menu. I'm going to call this OBXD for some reason. Uh, it's called, it's named with lowercase letters. I just want to drop eight instances, so I'm never going to be short on OBXDs. And. Um, Let's tap some tempo, maybe. Okay, 85. I'm gonna type 85 because I like I like round numbers. And now I'm gonna just zoom in. I want to start with making a kick drum because that's you know that's a simple thing. Okay, yeah, that's that is one bar. So I'm just gonna make this bigger, and you can see. OBXD making sounds. I'm gonna hit G for grab, right square bracket to set the loop markers around this region, and then hit L. All right, this is a little bit fast for a kick. Uh, you know, I'm gonna hit T for time stretch. This is that too. And I'm gonna just hit it and just try to hit it as close to this bar as possible. So now we should have a four on the floor. I'm gonna move this. Okay, I'm gonna select this region, right square bracket and L. I'm gonna enable. I'm gonna, I enable the metronome to, to verify that it hits on the onsets. Okay, let's call this one kick. And let's just jump right into it. All right, so this is OBXD. Um, I think I'm gonna maybe root myself a MIDI keyboard also, so I can hit some keys. All right, this is this this is this the note I'm hitting. Uh, please show me again this interface. So here we have the main window and. Let's just make sure it doesn't disappear. I'm gonna just play this note and we'll try to sculpt a kick drum with the synth. So the first thing you see, um, oh, by the way, this is a um, kind of a software emulation of a real hardware synthesizer called OBX by Oberheim. It is a little bit different, but mostly it's trying to emulate its sound and feel and look. I never worked with the hardware one, so I don't care. But I played around and it makes some interesting sounds. We have two oscillators and a noise generator. Here's the, our internal mixer. I'm gonna disable everything but one oscillator. Oh, that sounds like a triangle wave. be good for a kick drum but you will see that we have no way like the only envelope we have is the amplitude envelope and the filter envelope so we have no means of creating a pitch envelope in the synth so how do you make a kick drum you need a sine wave that is going from high built pitch to low pitch and the answer is we're gonna use the filter so I'm gonna actually disable the oscillator. I'm gonna enable noise. Or maybe even disable that. And let's see if we can make the filter to self oscillate. Because that's a feature that some filters have. No, it doesn't, os uh, doesn't self oscillate. 
So we're gonna need some source material and it lets, that'll be our noise. Now if I make this resonance bigger, you can see that we have kind of tone there. You can also change this to a steeper filter. Now that also makes it wider for some reason. Band pass. Okay, I don't know why, but I like the sound of this filter right, like right off. And you will also note that it is uh, like the control is smoothed out. You can see that there is no like my mouse is by no means doing these moves as smooth. Like no way. Uh, the sampling frequency of the mouse motion isn't so so frequent. So we would have some sharp corners and clicks, and none of that is there. It it sounds very analog. It sounds very real. Okay, that's very. Actually, that's very um, quiet. I'm gonna make it a little bit louder for you. Uh, or no, I'm gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna just make this louder on its own. So let's increase the noise level. I must say that this this thing, like there's a notch filter like coming from up to down. It it makes some ridiculous awesome sounds. Uh, and this synth looks simple, but I'm pretty sure we can get some very interesting things for stuff like dubstep, maybe even. Or drum and bass. Alright, so this is what I'm gonna use. Now we need an envelope, and here is one. Like this is right now at zero, so we need sharp attack, a short decay, and sustain at zero. And you hear that it does nothing because we have here we need to dial in the amount of the envelope that is used. And that is <laughs> the base of our kick drum. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> All right, so, well, uh, I'm gonna try making this a little bit more gentle. And I'm gonna turn up the noise. Wow, I like the shape of this envelope. Look how smooth it is. That's awesome. Wow, it, it, it like it slows down and slows down and slows down. It's wow, I like these kind of shapes. Okay, this is too much. That sounds more like it. But still. Let me get louder. Uh Okay, this is transposition. If you double click on the control, it resets that to uh, its original state. And if you hold control and drag, you have increased precision. I also wonder how precise is the filter cutoff control. So I'm going to disable the envelope. I'm going to play a note. I'm going to actually play the sequence in background. And I'm going to hit control and move this. I get the impression that it's that it, it has high resolution of this. Like I, I can't hear any stepping. Like uh, if you have a lower resolution control for a synthesizer, for exact, especially for a filter, because that's a very important thing. And you cover you, you're, you're covering like 20 ki 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with one knob. So if it doesn't have a big resolution, you're gonna ha hear some steps somewhere. Like you can jump between two 
values, but nothing in between. And if you can't do anything in between, that is a digital digital synthesizer implementation flaw, and that will give you some headaches. You can also you can try using envelopes or LFOs to like get around that, but if you just do automation, it's gonna cause problems. Okay, let's get back to the kick drum. There is a high quality mode. I have no idea what it does. I guess like some cool stuff could be done with automation with the synth because it responds very well as long as as much as I know. Let's try maybe using the oscillator. <laughs> okay, let's maybe de de tune it down. And now use the amplifier envelope. So you can see that the amplifier envelope is exactly the same as the filter envelope was at the start, but the sustain is all the way up instead of all the way down. And that's what you get if you have a zero length ADSR envelope. That sounds a little bit like a wooden stick or even kind of kick snareish all right i think this is oh this actually improves it all right i think this is our basic kick drum i have no ideas what we can do better for this patch. Uh, let's finish it off with some EQ, uh, distortion and compression. What do I do want to do? Let's try some calf saturator. Oh, I should have it as favorite. It's my favorite plugin. Because nothing makes drums more tasty than some nice distortion. All right, let's just ramp it up and listen how nasty it can sound. Pretty nasty. Oh, that's nastier. Interesting. Let's go with this. Oh, I've inserted this post fader. I wanted to do it pre fader. Now let's do an EQ 10Q. Okay, let's go stereo. We have no real stereo. Stereo, stereo, no stereo, nothing in here, but we're gonna go for stereo because it's two channels, because it generates stereo image. Let's enable a real-time analysis, and all right, this there's your problem. I mean, the main amount of energy is about around 200 hertz, and that's a little bit too high for a kick drum. That's good for a snare drum. Let's try using a resonate in low pass, sorry, high pass filter to emphasize the low end. Okay, 100 hertz can do. We could also try tuning the, the bass, so the cutoff, but it's as low as can be. Let's try using the key and see if we can do something with a different note. I'm gonna turn it on and off and hit a low note and see if it makes any difference. It does! Okay, so let's enable key and 
we will pitch shift this or just transpose. So I'm going to right click, MIDI, transpose, octaves. One, two, I don't know how many. Let's try two. Sounds nice. Now it's at C2. The funny thing is that the hits aren't consistent with one another. And that is because the old synthesizers, uh, especially the analog ones, have an oscillator that is working all the time. And all it does when you hit a note is sends a signal, oh, now change the frequency to that. And then when with the amplifier block, it sends a signal, actually it sends a signal to an envelope generator that says, oh, he's hitting a note open up this envelope and it starts up and that sends a signal to the amplifier saying okay man turn it up he's hit a note and that just lets through the oscillator sound but the oscillator sound is going on all the time so you're cutting off pieces of this oscillator just changing its frequency and sometimes you cut it off in the center of a wave on the zero crossing sometimes you hit you cut it off on the positive peak, sometimes on the negative peak, sometimes somewhere in between, and this is what we hear. Just listen. You hear? Some of these hits are louder than others, because our saw wave sometimes hits just with the peak, and sometimes it hits just when it's at zero. So it starts with nothing. And also we're using a random, pseudo-random noise generator. So it also starts in different places. So we have no consistency among the hits, but that's very natural and that's very analog and that's something that you might like or not. But I'm not doing this track to make everything to my liking exactly. I'm doing it this track today to discover OBXD and to teach myself and you about it and also show you some tricks. All right, so now what we have is um, just going with maybe some more EQ. Let's try emphasizing something higher and see what we, have, what we get. Or attenuating something. I like this. We get some more crunch. Now to the compressor, I'm going to use calf compressor because I like it. And now, whoa, we already have uh, some, okay, let's just ramp down the threshold very much and the ratio up very much so we can hear exactly what we're doing, like, and too much, okay. As you can see, now it sounds more like a square wave because this is reacting so fast that it's effectively doing distortion on the low frequencies. But it's leaving higher frequencies untouched because it doesn't work so fast. So this is actually a low band distortion right now, not compression. You may like it. I actually could use this. No, I want to make this release longer because I don't like the squarish, square wavish sound. I want to add a little bit of the bite for the transient. So you see we're giving <laughs> enormous amounts of gain reduction, like 15 decibels, but we're also giving 11 decibels of makeup gain. And that's pretty, pretty sharp. As sharp as it can get, I guess, with this synthesizer or with my skills with it. So let's jump to the Hi-hat. I'm gonna do hi-hat first. I'm gonna control middle click and drag this so we get a nice note. 
uh, nice base. Uh, actually, no, I'm gonna, oh, <laughs> Control Z. All right, uh, one thing to remember is go to Session, Properties, uh, MISC, and then Media Region Copies are independent. I prefer my workflow to be like that. Then, every time you copy a Media Region, it's an independent file on the disk, and if you change something in it, it won't affect anything else. Otherwise, if you duplicate a media region, it will be the same linked file. And if you change that, all the other ones will change too. So you might destroy your work if you don't notice. And that's a little bit dangerous to have it on by default and not realizing it. You have been warned. Let's see if it's recording still. It is 23 minutes in. Let's see how audio is recording. It is. Okay, we have backup. 41x runs, not bad. The levels are the levels are pretty hot, but not bad. Uh, okay. All right, let's get back to it. Uh, so as you remember, these are pretty low notes. Actually, I'm gonna just delete this one and draw something from the start because I don't want to mess up with the note pitch. Uh, actually, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, why this one isn't playing? <laughs> I made a triplet by mistake. I just looked and I didn't see the grid lines and I was like, what am I clicking? Okay, let's use this. Why not? Uh, so I'm going to just switch to this one, enable my MIDI keyboard input. All right, this is done then note. Right, this is gonna be super simple. I'm just gonna disable the oscillators, enable the noise source. Whoa! Okay, I didn't turn it all the way down. I was like, I disabled them. Why do they sound still? Oh yeah. Well, that's pretty quiet. And you'll notice this is actually pink noise. This isn't flat. It's not a white noise. And there is <laughs> something here to even make it brighter. As you can see when I'm moving this, we can hear a little bit of change and a little bit of change we can see also. All right, so let's make this a... Oh, that's why, because we have the low pass on. All right, that, that explains everything. So it is white noise. Uh, so let's just use the amplifier envelope. To give us a hi hat vibe. Let's see what we can do with this multi. Make it band pass. I would like to make it high pass. I don't know how. Can I? I'm not sure how some stuff works in here, still. How about using some resonance? Will it hurt? That might work, but it also might be annoying as crap. So, okay, let's just do this. And actually, let's try to stereoize it. Uh, I'm going to use two voices and pan them hard left and right. Okay, let's use three. And the third one is in the center. Uh, actually, it's a little bit too wide. I don't like it so wide. All right. Oh, so that's a neat trick. You can turn in unison and then all the voices are used for each note and you can pan them as you want. This isn't available in the hardware. This is only in the software version. I guess the hardware one was monophonic. Like, it wasn't monophonic. Like it, it was meant to play multiple notes, so polyphonic synthesis, but monophonic audio output, like just one channel. Actually, for example, the original Yamaha DX7 also was a monophonic, had monophonic audio output. I didn't realize it until I played with it, and until I used Dexed, which is a great emulator. We're gonna make a track with Dexed too, but not today. All right, 
Here's our super basic hi-hat. Let's go with uh, a little bit of reverb. Let's use stall reverb free. Just try it. I really like the sound of it. It sounds it sounds very smooth on some things and very cheap and cheesy on some other. And as you can see, there is some chorus engaged inside the center because there the things are waving, like the spectrum is shifting up and down in frequency. There is a chorus inside of this reverb unit. And that's not uncommon. Let's go all wet so we can easier hear. Okay, so low cut, the all down is actually engaging the low cut. But high cut, all up, is actually not engaging. <laughs> all right, interesting. That's still pretty big. I'm gonna use it very minimally. Just, just tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm gonna compress it, and then I'm gonna gain it, uh, gate it. Okay, so, but first I'm gonna EQ it, or just filter. I'm gonna use call filter, switch it to high pass, maybe 24 decibels per octave, because this is way too much. Oh yeah, I like it better. Now let's do a compressor. Let's try just crushing this and see what happens. Oh. Actually, we're softening it out. We're so fast that the initial attack is being absorbed. <laughs> and we all only hear... Okay, I just wanted to make it slightly more reverbish. Like glue it with the reverb. I think that will do. Let's try gating it. I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. Whoa! Pretty sweet on default settings. No, I like this better. Wow, we don't have any anything to tweak here. And why is that? It's because we're right below the threshold. So it's opening on the initial peak, and then it's immediately starting to close up. It does it for 250 milliseconds. And that leaves us with a short, consistent sound. Nice. Let's listen to the E's together. We could make a bass line. I could try playing it, actually, before we make a snare. All right, uh, I need to disable the um, recording because it otherwise won't allow me to change the name. Ah, oh, dear. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be easier to record it or to just dial it in. Let's try recording in loop. <laughs> Nope. Uh, actually, we don't have recorded much. So, all right, let's try dialing it in, maybe. Or maybe just use a metronome and record it. So I'm pressing seven. Okay, I have the first part nailed down. So let's just cut it off immediately. Just if we have it, we have it. Uh, let's use the grid and magnetic type. And the second part, we don't actually need to play it, I can just duplicate it. Da, 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 da. Because we just have to change. Ah, meh. Mm, I don't want the grid now. All right. Ba, 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 
pa. And this one is gone, and this one will be longer. Uh, it needs to start a little later. That should be good. Let's listen. It's a little bit sloppy. Let's first merge these two into one. So I'm selecting a range with this range tool. The shortcut is R. And then I'm hitting consolidate range. And now I have one MIDI region instead of two, which is great. Hmm. And I need to edit this because it's not perfectly timed. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move it here and duplicate our drums. Shift D, one duplicate, yep. And now I'm gonna, whoa, uh, hit G to select two of these. Hit right square bracket for loop markers to be around the selected one in L. Ah, this is, this is too early. Pa, pa, pa. I guess, I guess we could try to just quantize it and see what happens. It might just get it right. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm just quantizing it manually anyway. Because, well, I, I don't have much idea about the musical context of this. Let's try it. Yeah, that's it. We have our baseline. Let's synthesize it. All right, this, this is the default patch. Uh, so let's take a look what this default patch is because it is somewhat Reese basey. So we have two oscillators, one and two, both use saw waves and they are slightly detuned with, in between each other. And that's it. I don't see anything else engaged here. <laughs> play one note, we can see these very um, familiar shapes of Reese bass. And if we turn the detune up, let's just use one oscillator and see what happens. And pitch it down. Eee! Sweet, sweet saw. That is a triangle, I guess, or something close to a sine wave that isn't a sine wave. And that I don't know what is. I just have no idea. But we can have fun with bass. I'm gonna try using sync, because oscillator sync can do some quite interesting things when you change the pitches. So now, oscillator 1 is not being heard on its own, but whenever oscillator 1 ends a cycle, it forces oscillator 2 to also restart. Uh, and that is oscillator sync. Got it? Yeah, so now... We have an LFO here, which is called modulation. We can enable it in a sine wave form for us later one. That is so cool. <laughs> Have a Lopez filter engaged. I forgot. 
Oh, it sounds so sweet. I love it. Oh, that's so glorious. Wow. So smooth. So warm. <gasps> Man, this sounds so nice. I like it. I like it a lot. I think I want to make a wobble with this because it <laughs> sounds so cool. Okay, but huh? To make a wobble, I need to automate this because I'm also I'm already using the LFO for the sync. That's so, and this oscillator sync, dude, that is rad. Also, what happens if I use the multiple voices? Oh. Okay, that, that is so loud, sorry for that. But that is so cool. Let's pan them and see what happens now. Oh my goodness. That's ridiculously interesting sounding. Dude. That synth is amazing. You know what? I want to automate all of this. Let's jump in. Processor automation OBXD. All right, we have a long list of stuff. We want filter cutoff. Mm, v filled factor, mm, probably not. Uh, oscillator one pitch, no. Uh, filter, oh yeah, cutoff. Yep, we have cutoff. Next, what do we want? What do we? What do we want? We want this multi filter thingy. Uh, multi mode. This is. Filter warm. I wonder what filter warm is. Because that filter sounds super warm already. It's disabled. Uh, oh, I think I, I've lost this window somewhere below. Let's lock it above others. So what is warm? Is this high quality? Yeah, HQ, this is warm. Honestly, I can't hear a difference, but let's leave it on. Why not? All right, so we have the stuff we want. Now, uh, does it make any sense in the context of our baseline? Because that baseline wasn't programmed for this sound madness. I guess not. All right, so let's remove this. Let's make, make this Make, make it, okay, let's make it touch. So if I touch it, it's gonna write. If I don't touch it, it's gonna read. And let's try recording something. Oh yeah, well, let's loop it. And now do the same with this multi-mode, whatever that is. I feel like I should move this melody to a lead instrument or to a different bass instrument and use this with this with single notes because just the morphing of this is going to be so interesting that we don't need a melody or it hurts the melody because it's harder to, to hear the melody because of that modulation of the filters and stuff. So having a good melody is, is of no use. I don't even know if this is a good melody. Well, some melody. Okay, let's just mute it. I'm hitting Alt 1 and it inserts an... Oh, why is this play playing? Oh, it doesn't refresh. Uh, oh, the problem is that, that this doesn't move with, with that. Oh, maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it's a feature. Maybe we want that. Let's insert a new region. 
and play with it. I know what I want. And now let's try an octave lower. <laughs> See what happens. Papa. So our filters are, let's try overriding some of these automations. Yeah, we need to open up this filter more. I know what I want. I said that already, but I didn't do that. I want a freaking glide mode, monophonic. That's too much. Okay, why did I click this VAM, V-A-M? Uh, because I know that it makes, uh, it makes it, um, Reuse the same note slot. But I don't know if that makes any sense if we're using unison. I'm not sure, but some time when I tried this, it didn't work as I expected when I tried to use the glide for glissando or portamento, because the, these are the other names. Uh, and now it works. What is the spread? Is it the tuning of the unison? Yeah. madness kind of like it i'm gonna compress this and then sidechain compress this with the kick that's what i want to do now <laughs> Because I want the volume to be more consistent. Yep. And that does it. It's now like the levels are very consistent right now because before when the filter goes down, it was very quiet. And I did like that. So I'm gonna use a half sidechain compressor to make it a sidechain compressor. Well, that was unexpected. How do you use this? You go to pinout and then you enable sidechain and then you pick whatever the track you want to drive the sidechain. I want my kick. And then you just drag these to connect this sidechain input to the two second inputs of this compressor so it can hear it. Then we activate the sidechain, so we make use of that inputs, and we play it. And our kick compresses our bass. Uh, all right. 
pray. <laughs> uh, that's very weird. Very weird. Weird. Very weird. Uh, we need a snare. We don't have a snare. Uh, move this track up using control up. We call this snare. 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 Let's use the kick track. Control, middle click, drag, and I'm gonna. Mm, yeah, I need to shift this because the notes are lower. I'm gonna just hit E to edit and delete using shift right click, right mouse click, to delete every other. I'm gonna delete every other here too so we alternate between kick and snare. But I'm gonna leave this one in case I just don't want that. And I'm gonna mute the bass for now so we can just focus on the drums. I'm gonna hit G to select one of these, hit right square bracket and we have looped the first part. Snare, snare. Alrighty, so snare is gonna be this, let's solo it. And just dive in and try doing it. Okay, so let's use, uh, let's use a noise. Of course. Uh, of course, noise. Let's make it short. Let's not have this. Let's make it longer so we can hear easier what the filler is doing and then... Okay, so that's a notch. That's a nice notch. Uh, can we have a resonant? Yeah. Now let's enable the envelope. Wow! The envelope on the shortest... Oh, that's snappy. That's super snappy. That's like the snappiest filter sweep I've ever heard. Oh, wow. Snappy. Whew. I, I, I don't think I just need to do anything else with this. It's just so... It's the snare though. Uh, and then that snare though. <laughs> it just does it. Dude. Just. But what if I use unison? Ah, uh, too loud, sorry. Uh, now, let's use just three voices. Pan one and two. Delicious. Delicious snarishness. Fantastic. I love this synth. Oh, dude. All right. Uh, what else we can do? We can saturate it. That's right. With cough saturator. Can it be any better? Can it be any better? It could be shorter right now because then now it's just too loud. So sweet. So cool. <laughs> that filter is rad. That's a one good filter. Oh, that's much more snappy. Let's maybe mix it back. You can see we have a little notch here. There is some phasing going on. Let's hype as the lows, so we don't lose stuff, or we don't mess them up. And now let's compensate with an EQ. EQ 10Q stereo. I keep inserting these post fader, I don't want. Let's enable RTA. Ah, sweet peak around 250 hertz. Is it 250? Is it? No, it's 300. That's lovely. That's so sweet. Okay. Let's see what we can do with here. Anything to boost? Yeah, sweet. Oh, now, tasty. Anything higher? Ah, that's nice too. That's a little bit loud, foe. Uh, let's 
compensate. Better now? And finally, let's try some... We didn't even use some reverb, but let's try some reverb. Let's try M verb. Or let's try tall reverb free and see how it sounds on this. Uh, one bit smaller. Low cut. Nice metallic, interesting. Whoa, no, pretty delayed. It's, ah, it's very metallic. This one is better. I'm just gonna attenuate it to make it very, very, very delicate. And now compression. Uh, I actually want to make this tail a little bit, a little bit like, yeah, that's like, that's more <laughs> Skrillexy. I'm gonna do this just 50% dry and wet. Uh, is there anything else I can do? I should do. I have to do. I, I want to do. I want to high pass this also. Uh, make it 80 decibels per octave. Oh. Funny, it's not consistent, like all right, let's let's listen it with the rest. That's a pretty nice snare. Really. The snap of that filter sweep is amazing. I'm I'm shocked that it sounds so nice. We should make a track with Tal Noise Maker also. It also has some nice envelopes and filters in it. Alrighty, uh, let's hear it with the bass. <laughs> that is trippy. Uh, I'm gonna move this away and Alt 1 to mute it. And I'm gonna duplicate these two. Shift D, enter. So we have two of them, and I'm gonna just select Control right square bracket L. <laughs> that is weird. I know what I want. I want a snare. I want a double snare there. Or even triple. And an extra kick. Let's listen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so rad. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> uh, I think we're like lacking some sub bass in this. I I'm not sure about the low, low levels. It doesn't sound too bassy. We could add a sub bass synth, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna copy this one uh, to a new track. Call this um, sub bass. Ah, uh, please. And paste it here, replace it. Wow, it copied the automation. Ah, so the automation belongs to the plugin, not to the MIDI tracks. That's information worth keeping in mind. I'm gonna go E, select all these, and hit delete, because I don't want these. Or I'm gonna just do 
uh, clear, right and clear, and I'm going to use manual. Okay, so it's not used. Uh, I'm not going to use any filter modulation for the sub bass. The funny thing is, I could use the playlist of the bass. Oh, no. I can't. For some reason, I should be able to. All right, never mind. We're going to copy this. Control, middle click, drag. And now I'm going to just solo this one. Because we have exactly the same patch. And now what I want, use oscillator 1. It's... And disable sync. What else do we have? Oh, we have the pitch oscillator. Uh, LFO. Whoa, well, that gives some harsh clicks. Let's soften out the envelope. And disable unison. And make this pen in the center. Oh. Ah, okay, let's make it one voice because it was using consequent voices. Wow, so we can like pan one left, one right, and then every other note will go to left and right. That's a nice trick. Interesting. All right, so this is it, but I'm not sure really how low it goes, so I'm gonna use headphones because my monitors are eight inches, but... Oh yeah, that's proper. Uh, but they don't like make it as as big as high. Let's see if we can low pass this a little bit. Oh, why is it? Ah, because we're having this multi. <laughs> now that's subbaceous, subbaceous, subbaceous. That sounds weird. Hey, we have resonance. We don't need it. Also, we still have clicks. I would like to get rid of them if we can. I guess the only way to do that is to use a Lopez filter. And I'm going to do this called filter. Okay, let's go 36 decibels. Ah, not high pass, low pass. Okay, around 100 hertz. It's gonna be enough for our sub bass. Now let's listen together. <laughs> On the speakers, I hear like we would need more sub bass. And I'm not sure. I should check on this on the headphones. Because I might be mistaken. No. It's okay. This snare, this snare is amazing. I'm absolutely in love with this snare and with this synth because of that snare. That's ridiculous. Okay, let's save this project in case something crashes because it sometimes does and that's a good practice. Rule number one, if you have autosave, enable it. Rule number two, save your work often and save new versions. Uh, if you mess up, you will have something to rescue yourself from. If not, you're screwed! What should we do next? I'm gonna use... I'm gonna, I wanna do some lead. Or pad. Let's pad it up. Uh, pop. Ah, okay, let's make some... MIDI sequence, uh, 
maybe stretch it up. We will need some notes. Okay, let's maybe use this one note. And, no, no. And program some patch. Cool thing is, we get immediate response from the synth. And like in the nets of FX, for many things refresh after you play in the next note. And here, everything refreshes right when you do it. I guess this is a saw plus a square. Let's do some pulse width modulation. Some nice jitter. Ah, we can also use the filter. That's interesting. like a randomized sine wave. I like it. All right, let's... Make a plaque out of this. Ah, I want to make a pad. Sorry, I changed my mind. I'm gonna make a pluck. Uh, okay, but I need to make some other notes if I want this to be a pluck because it's gonna take a long time to show. Okay, let's call it pluck. Sorry, no pad right now. What if we make this manual? I think I need to modify my automation for the base. I'm gonna do this now. Sorry for changing directions and ideas in the middle, but that's what happens when you do music. I'm gonna make it touch and I'm gonna to touch it. Yeah, simple and effective. Now that the second one, let's go with touch again. Very simple and very effective. Let's listen again with all others, all of the other instruments. Something's not right here with this plug. 
and, and I can hear, I can hear some delay happening after this. And because this synth doesn't have one, I'm gonna in put in my own. Call vintage delay. I think this is the delay I use the most everywhere. Sync BPM. Will it sync? We have 85. All right. Maybe let's just dial it in. Roughly. Nice RPG rish sound. I want to make it die off quicker. Much quicker. And also, I'm not sure if I like this shuffled time. Let's try to make it simpler. Mm, that's very rigid. And boring. Let's try it this way. All right, let's go with this. And for sure we need more reverb. We don't have any, so we need more. Oh, sweet. Sweet, sweet. Make it brighter with oh, this band. So this is actually a Lopez filter on the reverb. Could be called Lopez, not band. Bandwidth. I really like and like the amount of the reverb. It's a lot. Let's use a compressor to glue this with the reverb tail. By the way, uh, by default, calf compressors have six decibels of makeup gain when you just put them in. And that results in some, sometimes, in unexpected uh, jumps in volume. Like, you put in a compressor and it's ooh, six decibels louder, hits you in the head, knocks you over. So I contacted the developers and asked them to make this zero by default. So when you dial it in by yourself, it's going to be there. So it's... On the way, it's in the Git versions. So if you're using the Git package for Calf plugins Git, then you have zero decibels probably already. But if you don't use the if you use the stable ones, then you have six decibels here. I'm gonna just turn it down. Ah, it's fairly quiet for you. All right, we have a little bit of compression, very subtle. Could be more aggressive. Yeah, like I'm not compressing this to get something very specific done. I just want it to sound compressed. Maybe that's what I want. I think the <laughs> notes for our bass don't really fit this right now. So I'm gonna copy them over. Uh, oh, no, no, this is the sub bass. So you can see we have another. I'm just gonna make a new, new sequence for our bass line. I need more bigger notes. Da -da -da -ba. Ba -da -ba. Actually, that oscillator sync is cool, but it makes the notes very hard to appreciate. Let's try it without it. Something's detuned here, I feel like. Maybe we don't need the sub bass when we have this. Let's listen to the headphones. The 
this is without, and this is with the sub bass. Well, they're playing different notes right now, so it's hard to tell. Let's for now go without the sub bass and finish this part. So I will check if I can just transpose this one octave up. Pa, 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 pa. Yep, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. How about the... This guy is detuned. Something is not not right. Ba -da -ba. Something is not right. Is the tuning right? Is the oscillator tune right? Something is wrong. Something's not good. Maybe just turn this. Oh, this is stepped. That's nice. Helps a lot. How about just repeating the same phrase twice? Shift the D, enter. Ta -da, ta -da. I want to change the notes. D for draw. Oh. Oh, what? Why? Let's remove the overlapping notes. I guess the automation right here caused me some unexpected change in timber. Timber! Why isn't this moving? I think I'm gonna have to copy this everywhere with this. Like, that might be a little problematic. Ah. Okay, I want to loop both of these. I know, the sub bass is gonna play a different note. Let's just de re delete that. Uh, I wanna merge this into one consolidated region. I'm just gonna copy this to my sub bassy sub bass. Ba 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 ba. It's hard to program it. I think, I think, I think I need to make this somewhere else on a different patch because I can't hear the notes. Let's use headphones. Hmm. Uh, maybe let's try it here. The problem is, I may perceive the pitches differently when they're so low and there's so little harmonic content. So I may program something and then it's gonna be bad. So let's just do it here. Let's delete everything else. Okay, E for edit. Now I can try to select. Oh, I'm not monitoring. Oh dear. 
Okay, that's not the same note. This note is right. This note is wrong. Probably I have to transpose this because it's not going to be audible. Yeah. All right. Just these two notes. Everything else deleted. I'm going to just move this to the sub base and move it right here. So it aligns with the rest of our awesome thingy. I'm going to listen to the headphones to hear the sub bass. Because that's not obvious. It is a little bit quiet, the sub bass. Let's make it a little louder. So let's check our base for for the actual content, harmonic content. Oh yeah. Let's listen if we could give it some. Yep. I'm going to save this as a new version because we have some stuff that we was deleted. Uh, snapshot and switch to new version. 0102. Let's call it. Yeah, this is like track 01 version 02. All right, that's it for today. We just used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six instances of OBXD. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have some questions or suggestions for this video or the future ones, leave them in the comments. The session will be available for download. The link will be in the description. Uh, I'm using Google Drive for now. For this if you want to host the files for me or something i don't know if you're rich uh, you can contact me and you will help everyone okay that's it uh, i will see you in the next video bye <laughs>